Hello and welcome to Manchester Futsal TV. I'm Michael Henson. Today I'm joined by Radicio King. Kingi, uh, how are you doing? I'm great, thank you very much. How are you? I'm, I'm great, thanks. Uh, so, we've got a big event coming up for you soon, uh, the Orlando Futsal Showcase. Going back a couple of months though now, yeah. when you probably first heard of it. Uh, what were your thoughts when the event was announced and take us through the process of getting to it? Uh, I first got talked about it earlier. It was a bit strange. Because uh, obviously we know people inside. So, uh, he came up to me and said, America wants to do futsal. And then they invite in two of the biggest futsal players to go and showcase, showcase it in there. But they will be asking 10 players to join them. So he said, uh, in order to join them, you need to replicate or copy the skills that they've done. And me and Jazz was nominated. So I was like, how did I even get nominated? Like, I don't know. But he said, uh, don't worry about it. Just go do the skills and then uh, hopefully you get into the finals. So uh, we've done the, we the skills, it took a couple of hours to get them done. And then, uh, yeah, uh, took a couple of hours to get them done. And then, then yeah, from there on uh, the process started. And obviously the voting process was a two stage uh, application. Um, when you've got into that, I think it was the final 25. Yes. Uh, could you believe it then? I know you said you couldn't believe it at the start, but could you believe it when you got into the final 25? Uh, to be quite honest, when we were shooting, the shoot didn't go as planned. So, even though I was like, yeah, it could be a great opportunity going there, but when the shooting was finished, my mind was completely off it, to be quite honest. And then uh, Simon popped up saying, well done, King, yeah? it's going to start now. And I was like, what, what, what? And then he told me, you got into the finals. And uh, 20, 25 people are remaining but now you're going to have to go and promote it in order to make the top 10. So at that point, I started like, OK, it's actually real. I might just get a chance to play with two of the biggest futsal players. So that's when I started promoting, get everybody on board. So that was good, yes. And talking about the promotion stage, obviously you've got a few contact, big contacts in the football industry. Did you utilise them at all? Yeah, 100%, 100%. I've got three, three good football friends play for big teams themselves. You can name check them if you want. Oh, no, it's OK. It's OK. Uh, yeah, no. They helped me with it, they helped me with it. A good thing about that was as well, like, because they're such a good football players and they're well known at that club, I told them, listen, put it out there, but even mention that if you keep voting, you might be able to win a chance of getting their shirt. So that was a good uh, selling point as well. So yeah, it helped me, helped me, and I appreciate that a lot from them. And now you're into the final 10. Um, you could fly out on Monday. Um, have you got everything planned so far? Planned in what sense? As in like your sort of itinerary for the week, uh, you know what you're doing? Every oh yes, yes, uh, we're speaking to Morgan. Morgan is basically the, the woman out there in America that keeps every, every futsal player that's going to be out there updated. So I've been given my little program and it's as follows, like I land on Monday, Tuesday I've got training session in the morning, we'll be, we will be provided training kit as well, which is good about it. Uh, Tuesday training, like I said, in the morning, Wednesday training as well, and then Thursday we the showcase. So yeah, I know what I'm going to be doing, so yeah. And Ricardinho and Falcao are probably the two biggest names in futsal, and now add that to Reducio King. <laughs> no, no. But yeah, no, they are two of the biggest. To be honest, they are the biggest. It's like a bit like Messi and Ronaldo. These are the ones in futsal, uh, Falcao and Ricardinho. Seen, Fal uh, seen Ricardinho in the, in the Euros, is it the Euros? Yeah, it was the Euros. Guy is magnificent, man. He's, he's next level. And Farkao was in, in India, so I've seen him uh, playing a bit with the, the old professionals, school, C gigs. He's, so yeah, he can still play, man. Yeah. And picking up on that Indian uh, futsal league, it was quite a success. Um, you had the likes of Ronaldinho there, Michel Salgado, Luis Figo's involved as well. Yeah. Uh, from your point of view, how good is that for the sport overall? Like, what is great about that is that English players were out there, like UK players. So. Gixi and Skulls, for them to be going out there having that futsal experience, they can now bring it back to the UK and maybe speak to the FA and get, get futsal on the map in England, if that makes sense. So I'm happy that they went. I'm very happy that they went. And so you'd view that as an overall success because obviously Doug Reed was on commentary with Sam Matterface as well and he's yes. being shown on BT Sport. Yes. Yeah, no, Doug Reed, he, he's the one that basically pushes futsal forward in regards of England. He wants to get it out there. So it's good that Doug Reed was out there helping the Indian people to set up the uh, futsal there and he's involved in uh, in America as well so that's good that's good so I'll be seeing familiar faces there 
and as you mentioned, America, uh, they're going quite big on uh, futsal, so they, they're, sell, they're selling the franchise at the moment. Yeah. Could you see yourself going over there at some point? 100%. I'm not going to take that away. If the opportunity is there for me to go and play in America, by all means, I'm going to take it. Take it. So America is big. And you know when the Americans do things, they always do it huge. Mm-hmm. So you can see about basketball, baseball. Is it baseball they call it out there? Yeah, baseball. Yeah. Baseball, rugby, everything is just huge there. So I can imagine futsal going far and being big out there as well. So I suppose you could use this showcase as a sort of networking opportunity out there. Yeah, hundred percent. And but the good thing about this trip as well is that we, we're going to be having the chairman out there. Simon is going to be coming, so I could basically focus on just the futsal bit, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And then Simon will probably do the talking and get MFC on the map because obviously I'm going there to represent Manchester Futsal Club, and he's going out there to represent Manchester Futsal Club and myself as well. So it's good to have him out there as well with me. And how big an influence has Simon been on you so far during your Manchester career? That's very huge. It's like I think that I'm very thankful of having him supporting me day out and day in, or whatever you call it, day in, day out. So no, it's a. Uh, I've, I've known Simon for a good eight years now, and we went we went way back. Like we go in Nichols days, college days, basically. So uh, he's always supporting me. So I'm very grateful because I, I remember leaving the club. And then just one phone call, and Sammy be like, "You're more than welcome to come." And it's always been like that, so yeah, very happy. I'm focused on you now, swiftly. You've got quite a, a large family network behind you. Yeah. Uh, as you can see in our background, you've got your little brother. How <laughs> supportive have they been on you on this journey? Very, very, and they they they're happy. They're happy that it's finally moving the way I want it to move. They come to the matches as well, so uh, they see what futsal is, and I'm like coaching the kids myself. I always trying to take them to the futsal court and play a bit of futsal, upgrade their technique. Because, yeah, no, they've been supportive. And you're quite an all-round player. It's, uh, obviously, your uh, time in professional football in Gibraltar and England non-leagues. Yeah. Do you think that helped you sort of develop your skills because you've had both the futsal aspect of it and the football side of it? I think where my skills really came out, it was in Holland, Amsterdam, street football. And mentioning street football, Issy Hitman, he's probably one of the well-known street footballers. He's going to be going to America as well. So uh, I'll be playing alongside or either against him. But it started back in Holland, like street football is well known there. It's a bit like futsal here. So that helped me. And then obviously coming to England, being able to play futsal and combine that with football. It's just great. It's just great, yes. And focusing uh, on your days in Holland when you're growing up, um, could you ever imagine you'd get to something like this in, in your career? No, can you ever imagine something? No, you always dreamed of going to big events as a kid. Obviously, I, I was always a kid that loved to play, whether it was football or futsal, either game was good for me, as long as I touched the ball. But, yeah, imagining things like that, no, not really, but it was never out of my mind. I always wanted to play in big showcase events and either big stadiums or whatever. No, it was, I don't know, I don't know. I, it was there, it was there, somewhere in my thoughts, yeah. And you're quite a skillful player yourself. Uh, what's your favourite skill? Fake shot, 100% fake shot. And we've seen that plenty of times for this year uh, for Manchester Futsal Club. Uh, how would you describe the season overall? Very testing. It was a very testing season because uh, it was it was my first year coming back from to Manchester Futsal Club. Uh, when I came back, I, I, I was told that the FA is going to do a North and South League. So I didn't really know what to expect because previous years we, we've been beating teams for fun. But this year was very testing because of the new league. Uh, you got a couple of good teams in the league. So for me personally, you always want to win the league because you're Manchester Futsal Club. But in the back of my mind, I wasn't really fussed of winning it. I just wanted to see what the league was like. But next year, we'll be competing for it, 100%. And as you mentioned next year, uh, have you already got your pre-season underway? No, pre-season starts when I'm away. So I'm actually happy about that. I'm happy that the lads will be running around with Chris Vernon. And then I'm out there enjoying the sun, getting a tan. (laughs) Yeah, no, uh, happy, yeah. And is there any reason why we can't go and sort of get a league and cup double next year? No, 100%. That's, that's Manchester Futsal Club always try. Is it strives? Yeah, it strives. Strives to get everything, everything. If ever is going into Euros, which is a big task, but 100% winning the league and getting FA Cup out there, 100%. And then obviously the third one would be going into Euros, which is a very, very bonus for myself, for everybody involved with the club. No, uh, and that uh, wraps up the interview, so I'd like to thank uh, Reducio for uh, taking time out of his schedule to come and uh, speak to us, and uh, best of luck in Orlando. Thank you very much. Uh, I've been keeping everybody on date. You can actually follow Manchester Futsal Club on Snapchat, 
Uh, in order to do that, go to the Twitter page. Uh, Simon or anyone that does the Twitter page will be uh, promoting the Snapchat so you can add Manchester Football Club on Snapchat. And then uh, I'll be giving you the latest behind the scenes. Uh.